Good morning. Welcome everyone. It's Sunday morning, December the 27th. We want you to get your family together and get ready for a great service today. Grab your Bibles on the way to gathering everyone together and get ready for the Word of God. You know, the Bible says the Word of God has power. And since it has power, we want to be students of the Word. So it's a great day to worship the Lord, get together as a family, get ready for a great time with the Lord.
praise the Lord, everyone. He is a way maker. I love that part in the song where it says, even when I don't see it, he is working. And God is working on our behalf. I trust that you've had a blessed Christmas. I know that it hasn't looked like what it normally looks like, but the truth of Christmas, the spirit of Christmas, the reason for Christmas that Christ came into the earth is still as much real as it ever has been, even if our expression of how we celebrate has been different. So don't forget why we celebrate and don't get stuck on the things that we can't do right now, but let's look at what we can do. Let's spend time with our families and our homes. Let's spend time reaching out to one another, praying for one another, and getting into the Word of God and celebrating Jesus. Now, as 2020 draws to a close, I'm taking some time to reflect on this past year. And the scripture that comes to my mind is in Ephesians chapter 6, which we've talked about a lot this year. So if you would, let's turn in our Bibles. Ephesians chapter 6, and I'm going to read verses 10 through 12. And it says, Finally, my brothers, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. These words could be an anthem for the year 2020. We have had physical battles. We've had battles with our health. We've had battles in the economy. We've had battles with our finances. We've had battles with our businesses. But we've also had spiritual battles. We've had battles of fear and confusion, depression, loneliness, doubt, anger. But God has called us to stand strong even in the midst of all of these battles, to be strong in him, to use his word to arm ourselves, to use his word as the weapons of our warfare. So as we prepare to step into 2021, it's time for faith to arise. A few verses down, and for me it's on the next page, in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16, it says this, and this really stuck out to me as I was preparing. It says, Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Notice it doesn't say that with the shield of faith that we will be able to quench some. It doesn't say we'll be able to quench a few. It doesn't even say that we'll be able to quench many, but it says all. The Phillips translation says it like this. Above all, be sure you take faith as your shield, for it can quench every burning missile the enemy hurls at you. The word quench, I looked it up, it means to extinguish or to render powerless. Faith renders the weapons of the enemy powerless. It doesn't say that faith will stop the enemy from attacking us. But it does say that faith will stop any of his weapons from harming us, any of his weapons from stopping us from doing what God has called us to do. Because Isaiah 54, 16 says that no weapon formed against us will prosper, will be able to advance against us, will be able to succeed. And we praise the Lord for that. So 2021, as I've been praying, I feel is a year for our faith to arise. See, faith doesn't deal with my past, because my past is over. My past is finished. I don't need faith to change my past because I can't change my past and you can't change your past. So when God is speaking to our hearts to arise in faith, he isn't talking about where we have been, but he's talking about where we're going to. And faith doesn't even really deal with my present situation. Faith stands in my present, but faith speaks to my future. 
I stand in my present circumstance, and my faith speaks to my future. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. If you got your Bibles, let's turn there this morning. Oh, praise the Lord, I opened right to it. I always love when that happens. It says this, it says, Now, which means in the present, faith is the substance of the things that I hope for, the evidence of the things that have not yet been seen. Faith is the substance of the things that we hope for. The things that we hope for are things for our future. So faith speaks from our present situation into our future, the hopes and the promises God has spoken over us. I know many of you have Jeremiah 29, 11 as a favorite scripture. It says, for I know the thoughts and the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans to give you a hope and a future. See, God's thoughts about you, God's thoughts about me, they are not about our past. The enemy likes to bring up thoughts about our past. He likes to remind us about our past. He likes to remind us about all the times that we failed and all the times that it looks like that he has triumphed over us. But God doesn't bring up our past failures. He doesn't even bring up our past successes. He brings up his thoughts and his plans for us and his past victories and his present victories and his victories that are outside of time. His victory is eternal. And so God is having thoughts about us, about our future. God is prophesying into your future because faith speaks what God speaks 2 Corinthians 4.13 says this. You can, don't have to turn there, just listen. It says, we have the same faith the psalmist had when he wrote, I believed, therefore I spoke. So also, we believe and we speak. See, God created my future. In fact, God is my future. He says, I am the alpha and the omega. I am the beginning and the end. God is my beginning and he is my end. He is the one who created me. The Bible tells us that he knit me together. He knit us together in our mother's womb. And he is the one who is sovereign. He is the one who has the final say. So when I understand this, I don't need to worry if I'm going to be able to finish well. I don't have to worry if I'm going to be able to complete my course. For if I stay in him, and if I finish well, if I stay in him, I will finish well, because he is my future. He is my reward. He is the one who calls things that be not as though they were, Romans 4, 17. He is the one that in the beginning spoke, let there be light, and there was light, and that light has never stopped. See, God has victory for us. And his victory for us is giving us a hope and a future. And the faith that comes from the word wants to prophesy that victory over us. So I know that this past year has been a challenge. And we have walked through many battles. And there has been a lot of blessings that God has given us, but a lot of us are tired. We're, we're tired of lockdowns. We're tired of businesses being closed. We're tired of hearing about a disease that's going through our community. But God has hope for us. And so as believers, as those who reach out in faith, we need to fix our eyes on the things that God has said and let this year, which is almost closing, I think we have five days left of 2020. And it's not that I'm looking for 2020 to be over, but I kind of am. Because everything that God does is good. And so everything that God has done in us this year, even though it has been a struggle, has been for our good. 
But we are stepping into a new season. We're stepping in to a new year and we need to grab a hold of the new that God is doing and leave behind our past. So I have a question as I always do because that's how God speaks to me. What is faith speaking in you? As 2021 begins, what is faith speaking to you? See, as a church family, I think it's time for us, as believers, it's time for us to stop just passively allowing life to happen to us. It's time for faith to begin to speak. It's time for us to advance and to speak over us what God has already spoken. It's time to prophesy over yourself. Now, I know some of you are saying, I'm not a prophet, I'm not called to be a prophet, so I can't prophesy. Well, you probably aren't called to be a prophet, but you can prophesy. The Bible says that we can all prophesy. And actually, when you look up what prophecy means, it just means to speak the inspired word. This is the inspired word. You're not going to prophesy from yourself. You don't have to sit around and make something up. You need to get into the word and speak what God speaks. That's prophesying over yourself. A story that we all love and it inspired a song that many of you really, really like is in Ezekiel 37, 4, and it's the va valley of the dry bones. And in that verse number 4, it says, he said to me, speaking of God, to Ezekiel, prophesy to these bones, say to the bones, hear what the word of the Lord says. See, that's really the spirit of prophecy. That we look at a situation, we look at our life, and we speak over it, and we say, hey, you, you're going to listen to what God says. I know right now you might be sick and you might be feeling unwell, and you might be going through a physical battle, but God says, by his stripes you are healed. But God says, he who forgave all of our iniquities and healed all of our diseases, and we begin to prophesy over ourselves from the word of God. We speak what God speaks. We speak from faith. We let faith speak over us. The word is inspired by Holy Spirit. It says all scripture has been given by God through the Holy Spirit, and all of it is beneficial for us. So we can take this word and speak it over ourselves, and it will benefit us. Every scripture, that's why we're going through the word as a church family and taking time, 15 minutes a day, to get into the word, to know what it says, so that we know what God has spoken over us. So you can prophesy the promises of God over your life and let faith speak. It's really that easy. We make it complicated. We make it like a prophetic word has to be some kind of miraculous thing that comes out of our mouth. But to prophesy is just to speak what God speaks. So grab the promises in the word. Begin to speak them, to prophesy them over your life, over your family, over your future. Are there some things in your life right now? Are there some things in your family? Are there things in your finances? that aren't lining up with what God has promised, then get into the word and find what God has spoken over you and begin to speak it over yourself. You might feel like the devil is warring against your life, like he's warring against your future. Well, here's what we do. We wage war in the spirit, and we prophesy what God has decreed. Just like we read, see, the weapons of our warfare are not natural. We don't literally get swords 
and helmets and armor and spears and shields. But spiritually, we understand that the things that God has given us are as effective as natural armor. They protect us. So when we see the devil waging a war against us, then we need to pick up an attitude of war against that spirit that's trying to block the future that God has spoken up. It's time to rise up and stand in the authority that we have in Christ and let faith speak out of our mouths. See, if you want God to move in your life, then you've got to be active in his word. You want God active in your life, you've got to be active in his word because that is what he has given us. He has given us his word. He spoke and things became into existence. And he has spoken over us. And he is expecting us to rise up in authority, get into his word, and use the weapons that he's given us to push back the darkness that seems to be trying to overwhelm us. 2 Corinthians 4, 6 says this, For God who said, let there be light in the darkness, has made this light shine in our hearts. When God spoke, let there be light, light came into being. And the darkness could not understand it, and the darkness couldn't overwhelm it, and the darkness couldn't put it out. And it's that same light that God spoke, that same light, which is Christ, that the Bible tells us right there in 2 Corinthians, that God has put that light in us. So you have the ability, you have the authority through God's word to push back the darkness that's trying to overwhelm your family and your life and your finances and everything that pertains to you and the future that God has spoken over you. You see, there is a spirit in the world, and that spirit is speaking over you. It's speaking a false prophecy over your life and your future. It might be saying something like this. You're not going to make it. You'll never own a home. You'll never have a family who loves you. You're always going to struggle with your health. Retirement, you can barely pay your bills. How will you ever be able to retire? You're always going to be angry. You're never going to be able to lead someone to the Lord. You can't prophesy. You can't speak. See, that's what the spirit of the world has been speaking over us. And I think too many of us have been listening to that spirit and that prophetic word, or more rightly so, pathetic word, because it's not what God has spoken. The enemy is actively engaged in warfare against us. And he wants to stop us. He wants to stop you because you are the church. The church isn't the building. If anything, this year has taught me is that this building, as much as I love it, as much as I'm so happy and blessed by what God has done for us here at Leamington Christian Center and just when you think back to what the old building was like and now you see what we have, it is a miracle of God. It is, it is the biggest miracle I have ever seen with my own eyes because I know 100% we did not do this, but God did it. But this building, as wonderful as it is, this isn't God's church It's just a building. You are the church. We are the church. So the enemy is actively engaged in warfare against us because we're the church. We're the ecclesia. Get out Pastor Bobby's messages again and and listen to what he talked to us about authority, about uh, the legal precedent in the word of how God has called the church, the ecclesia, to be his 
authority, his governing body on the earth. So it's not that the devil doesn't like you because there's something wrong with you. The devil doesn't like you because you are Christ's church. You are the ones who have been given authority over him. So he doesn't want you to fulfill your destiny. He doesn't want you to grab hold of the promises of God. He doesn't want faith speaking out of your mouth because when it does, it causes light to shine and push back the darkness that he is trying to spread over the world. God has given us the sword of his word. So it's time that we use it. It's time to rise up and actively engage in our future, in our family, in our life. If you don't like what's happening in your life, then I'm going to tell you what God told me. I can't really say I liked it when he said this, but it blessed me in that it changed things. God told me, if you don't like what's happening in your life, stop blaming other people and start getting active and engage in the word and speak over your life and change it. Because I've already given you my word. Now you put my word in your mouth and speak it forth and prophesy over your life and watch things change. Because God's word works. And his word changes the atmosphere, and it changes everything. So you might have to get a little aggressive. I know as Canadians, we don't like to think of ourselves as aggressive. But let me tell you, as a Canadian and as an American, so an insider and an outsider, you can say all you want, you're not aggressive. Let me tell you, you're aggressive. And you can get aggressive with the things that you want. So it's time that we want what God has spoken. And we get a little aggressive. The weapons are aggressive. Warfare is aggressive. Now, I'm not telling you to go get aggressive with your family or aggressive with your coworkers. Don't get aggressive with your coworkers. <laughs> Don't get aggressive with people. We don't war against flesh and blood. We don't war against people. Our problem isn't people, but our problem is these spirits that are operating in the world causing fear and anger and hatred and frustration and confusion and depression. So we might have to get a little aggressive in what we allow to enter our home. We might have to get a little aggressive in what we allow to enter into our minds. We might have to get a little aggressive about what we think about and what we speak out of our mouth. I love this verse. Pastor has been reminding us of it over the last few months. It says this in Jude chapter 1 verse 3. Earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered to the saints. You know, that word contend, it doesn't mean just sit on a recliner. It actually means to struggle. It means to get a little aggressive. So if we're going to have faith, if we're going to fulfill God's purposes over our life, we might have to put a little struggle in. We might have to put a little effort in. We might have to get a little aggressive in the spirit, a little aggressive in the word. Put some effort, put some time into finding what God has spoken over us. To put our foot down and say, this might be how things are right now, but this is not how they're going to be because my God has said this over me. If you're in a battle right now with your health, you have to decide that God's word is true. 
you have to decide to pick up that sword and begin to wield it over your life, to begin to declare daily, sometimes hourly, what God has spoken over your life so that you can walk out of that struggle and find the victory that he has paid such a high price for. The cross behind us that we look at every Sunday, that we put before our eyes, it's not just a cool symbol, but it's a reminder that he shed blood. He contended for us. He struggled for us so that he could provide the victory for us. You have to stop waiting for someone else to come and fix it for you. Here's one. I loved it when God said this to me too. Stop waiting for some big name preacher or a pastor to call you out and publicly release a phenomenal prophetic word over you. Get into the word and prophesy over yourself. Yes, we respect the ministers that God has put into our life. But they in themselves can't do anything for us except for speak what God speaks. So why would we wait around for someone else to come along when we can hear from God for us, for ourselves today? If I'm having a struggle today, especially in a lockdown, when the border's closed, I can't wait for a, a, an evangelist to come into the church and prophesy over me. I've got to prophesy to myself. I have to take authority in my family. I've got to take authority in my life. Lord said this to me too. I guess I'm telling on myself today, but that's okay. You know how this is how our family works. The Lord said, when are you going to stop looking for someone to minister to you and start asking and believing me to minister through you? The Lord spoke that. It took a little time for me to really grab hold of it. But it changed the way I looked at things because I had a lot of challenges in my life. And I was constantly looking for someone to minister to me, for someone to speak over me, for someone to encourage me, to prophesy over me, to send me a text message with a scripture in it, to send me a message or give me a phone call and say, the Lord had you on my heart today and I was praying for you. And the Lord started to say to me, I have put something within you for you to minister to other people. You be the one getting the scripture and sending it by text to someone else. You be the one who makes the phone call and say, God's placed you on my heart. I was praying for you today. To change our focus, it's, it's called open up your Bible and begin to prophesy over yourself. Declare the word. Let faith speak over you. Now, if you're part of our church family listening this morning, I'm going to ask you to take some time these last few days of 2020. And I'm going to ask you to write down some of the promises from the word you feel Holy Spirit is leading you to. And we're going to begin to speak them over our life. We're not waiting for 2021 to come to walk into the new. Today is a new day. Today is the day that the Lord has made. And regardless of what the number of the year is, we are going to get these promises out of the word of God and begin to speak them over ourselves. You see, I don't want to drag my feet into the new year and just make some resolutions that I might last two days, two weeks, maybe two months, but won't bring any change to my life. I want to change now. I want to change today. I want faith to speak and to change the circumstances of my life. I want to step in with the word of faith to 2021 and contend for the future 
that God has purposed for my life. And I know many of you feel the same. You don't want to just walk into 2021 and not know what God's going to do for you, not know what's going to happen. Give in to the lie that the world is saying that it's all uncertain. We don't know what's going to happen. I might not know what's going to happen with an election. I might not know what's going to happen in our government. I might not know what's happening in our economy. But I know this. I know that God is on his throne, that he is sovereign, and regardless of what is happening in the natural, he has spoken, and the things that he has spoken are real, they are effective, they are powerful. And regardless of what the economy is saying to us, if we operate in the word of God, we will be blessed to be a blessing even in the midst of of a bad economy, that God can provide for our needs as we put him first, as we seek after his righteousness and his kingdom, that all the things that we need will be given to us regardless of what the economy is saying to us. So I want to urge you this morning to contend for your future, contend for your family, contend for the things that God has prophesied and purposed and planned for your life to come into being and for you to begin to walk in them, not just in 2021, but today. Because today is a good day to celebrate. Today is a good day to speak the word of God over us. So if you would, let's just pray as we close our service this morning. We're just so thankful, and I, I just want to give a shout out to all of you families that participated in our Christmas celebration, all of the kids, the junior youth, the youth, the families, and some of you adults. You did a great job, and we were just so blessed to be able to share that for the first time ever, sharing our Christmas program online for all the world to see. And I know we have already had phone calls in saying, we were so blessed by your Christmas program. It really spoke to me. So good job, everyone. Really, really proud of you. But this morning, let's pray. Father, we thank you because you are faithful and Lord, we know that you have plans for us, plans of hope, plans for our future, plans for victory. So Holy Spirit, we just invite you to come even now right there in our homes with our families and begin to remind us of the promises that you have spoken over our lives, the promises from the word of God, these great and precious promises that you have given us to wage war, to contend for the future that you have planned for us. Because Lord, we know that you are the one who gives good gifts and you have made awesome, amazing plans for each of our lives. And we want our faith to arise and speak what you have already spoken over us. So right now, Lord, for each one watching with us, for each one in our church family, I pray that grace would be on them. Grace to hear, grace to understand, grace to grab hold of the word of God for themselves, to walk it out, to read it, to speak it, and to declare it, to prophesy it over their lives. And we will watch and see things that we thought were impossible begin to change because of your word being released over our church family. Be blessed this morning. We can't wait till we can worship together in the building, but until then, get in your word, watch the services online, participate on the Tuesday prayer, and let's believe God for greater things for our lives and our families. Be blessed today. 
Well, that was a great message. We give God thanks for his word. We can count on the word being true and we're thankful for it. Before we end today, I want to have a word of prayer. You've been so kind and generous with your offerings, even though we've been having virtual services. And I want you to know that last week, we gave out gifts and offerings to 13 different families who were in need. I think all but one were not members of our church. We're thankful for the members of our church being blessed, and we're thankful to have the opportunity to bless others. So let's pray. Father, we give you thanks. We wouldn't have anything to give unless you blessed us. Everything that we have really is a blessing from you. Even for those that think they earned it, you gave us the ability to earn. So we give you thanks, and we ask you to multiply and continuing to bless us as we look to you, our God, our supply, and our source. Thank you, Father, for everything you do. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone said, Amen. Thank you.